from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Day one, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of VMworld 2018. Yanbing Li is here, she's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Storage and Availability at VMware. Great to see you again, long time CUBE alum. And Beth Phelan, President of the Data Protection Division at Dell EMC, also a many time CUBE alum and alum of the Marlboro Studios. Yeah, Great to see, we yeah, just saw each other a couple again. weeks ago. Yeah. So, yep. welcome back to the CUBE. Big day, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yan Bing, let's start with you. Uh, we heard Pat Gelsinger this morning mm -hmm. talking about you know, the the, the superstars, yeah. things like AI, these mega trends. What are you seeing, particularly in, in your world, of the mega trends? What are the tailwinds? Yeah, you know, I love the, how Pat described the, you know, the, the mega trends, whether it's the cloud, mobile, you know, IoT, and AI. And really, I think the common theme of everything at the very center of it is data. You know, data is the lively, you know, lifeblood of all of these uh, mega trends. And certainly for being someone working in a storage space, we definitely are excited to see that how that's not only going to drive uh, a storage consumption, new technology demand, new requirement into storage, but really make data an extremely important angle. So, uh, so certainly from the storage and availability business point of view, uh, we're excited about the growth of uh, uh, our business around VCN hyperconverged uh, infrastructure. We have some exciting announcement done by Andy Jesse this morning, and you know we're taking VCN not only put it in the cloud, but truly deeply integrated with technology in the cloud and leverage the elasticity and the massive scale of the cloud. So, uh, so I do think the um, what's exciting to me is looking at those four mega trend. I think the common thread mm -hmm. is about data and. You know, when I look at what uh, Beth and I do together, you know, we do a lot of collaboration around data protection, data management. Yeah. 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 yeah so Beth, you, you can't get, you don't bet against the data, do you? Yeah. I mean, you've been yeah. in this business, you know, for most of your career, right? I mean, it's been a good bet. It, but yeah. what are you seeing from your perspective? I mean, the same, the same mega trends all impact data protection, and they bring new twists to the requirement of ensuring that you can still have access to your data no matter what happens. But when you move to a multi-cloud environment, when you move to the edge, when you start thinking about IoT, there's a whole nother set of attributes that are required to make sure you can still have that same kind of confidence. So it's a really fascinating time to be in data protection. Um, you know, this morning we talked about in one of our um, uh, announcements how we now have data protection integrated with vCloud Director. We also have um, Cloud DR to VMware Cloud on AWS. So we're continuing to overlay the use cases that we all know well, disaster recovery, backup, data management, but now overlaying them onto these new, these new deployment models and these new configurations. And data protection is more important than ever. I mean, it just, you can't run a business without having confidence you're going to be able to get your data back. Yeah. Yeah, uh, one of the things I, I find pretty interesting, because I've lived in engineering, uh, yeah. is People look at this and say, oh, well, I'm going to live in a lot of different environments. Oh, we'll just port it here, we'll port it there. Oh, you know, VMware takes the stuff and puts it in the cloud. There's a lot of engineering work. Yeah. Maybe give us a little bit of insight as to how these joint solutions, what kind of joint efforts are involved, mm -hmm. and, and how much really work needs to go in for these various environments. Yeah, so uh, maybe I'll start. I, I think first of all, you know, VMware is transitioning from a software company to truly uh, embrace cloud as our core DNA. And even the experience of taking our entire software defined data center uh, software stack into the cloud was quite an eye-opening experience. I remember uh, Stu, last year, we spoke with one of our principal engineers about you know, the early days of uh, VMC on AWS. So, so I think we've seen, uh, uh, we have to transform our software development practice fundamentally truly adopt a CICD type of practice. And you know, a lot of these things is what can keep us uh, on this very rapid cadence of cloud-like uh, uh, delivery. So, so transforming our engineering culture, that's an uh, uh, important angle. The other thing is also to truly um, uh, understand the difference of uh, the cloud requirements versus what the uh, enterprise customer may be mm -hmm. uh, looking for. And to be able to adapt our product and technology 
uh, uh, toward that. I think some of these uh, uh, unique requirements, like uh, you know, the, when we did the VCM backed by EBS projects, you know, we have to truly be able to characterize the performance cost um, uh, trade-off between EBS and the old flash uh, environment uh, before we make the right architectural decision on how we build the uh, product. You know, we're very excited to see you know how cloud is not only driving. Um, you know, our company culture, but fundamentally changing how we build uh, products. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that you said, and what we find is, while people want to take advantage of a multi-cloud configuration, they want to continue to be simple and seamless, and so doing things like a failover to the cloud with two clicks and then failing back with three clicks, it's the same expectation, right? If, if moving to the cloud required a lot of manual steps, was something that became more onerous or affected performance, then it would lose the benefits. And so you have to continue to strive to engineer things that meet all of those requirements around performance, simplicity, reliability, but now in this more diverse, you know, multi-cloud environment with more distribution. So it's a very interesting engineering problem. And in terms of collaboration, we've been, yeah. um, you know, our teams talk regularly, we are up at the, we have people who are, you know, at the offices in VMware, and yeah. really the only way to do it is just some good old fashioned engineering discussions, right? There's nothing, there's nothing that can replace that, right? Sometimes you just have to get people in front of a whiteboard and yeah. talk it through. Yeah, and I want to give a real examples of that. Uh, we um, uh, announced as a beta, the native vSAN integrated data protection. This is essentially building a highly set, uh, uh, scalable set of high performance snapshots um, um, natively out of vSAN. Uh, but as we think about how we build that into a full data protection solution, we're collaborating with a best team, with real co engineering, co located right. engineering teams together and building our solutions. Uh, that's going to be natively integrated into vSAN, and certainly in the future, that will also go to uh, VMC on AWS. Actually, we've also adopted a cloud-first uh, mentality. You know, we're not shipping this capability first yeah, to on-prem customers, we're actually pushing it to VMC first. So, uh, that's great, Yanving. So, okay, so that's a choice of where you're going to deploy. It, mm -hmm. Does it also have implications on how you develop? Like the underlying code and, and the approach you take? Yeah. It, it does, I mean. What are the nuances there? Yeah, I mean, a um, couple things. One, truly transitioning to a Scrum, to an agile process with Scrum development processes. Um, and that's, a, you know, that's more than a simple transition. That requires a whole different mindset. And moving towards the concept of microservices instead of a monolithic sort of old school, but enabling something that can run in a cloud environment, run in AWS, um, can also run on-prem. So it does require a significant change. Yeah. So, we're tight on time. I want to talk a little bit about the power women of tech. First of all, you guys both engineers? Yeah. You yeah. are? Yeah, we okay. started that way. So yes. that's, yes. that's interesting. <laughs> we'll maybe come back to that. Yeah. You're very comfortable, both of you, because I've talked to you both before about the whole women in, in, in tech piece of it. Last year at this time, we had a discussion that was pretty open and transparent. There was the poor misguided soul from Google who wrote the Jemmy, Jerry Maguire oh, letter yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and that whole thing. Um, it's, it, it seems like quite a long time ago where Satya Nadella at the Grace Hopper mm -hmm. conference sort of stuck his foot in his mouth. Huh. Um, but, but I wonder if you guys can give us the state of the state from, from your perspective. Right. The state of the state, I, I think we are not quite there yet, but there is a tremendous uh, effort uh, going on. So uh, yesterday I kicked off my experience at the show actually speaking to our hands-on lab staff speaking to the women's staff at the hands-on lab. If you think about what happens at hands-on lab, it's super technical. I mean, these are the people who support our customers doing deeply hands-on technical uh, experiments with, with our products. And we've been trying to push for a higher levels of women representation in those hands-on lab staff. And we successfully increased the participation of women by 100%. That's fantastic. You know, from like 20 last year to over 40 this year. I mean, these are the folks that really are what do we call the hidden figures of VMworld. They're the one that make VMworld a great experience uh, for our customers. I think, yeah, there are lots of efforts like this happening at this event, certainly in our respective uh, organizations. But I have to say, 
you know, the numbers still don't seem to move the needle yet. And this is also what make it uh, so important for Beth and I to call up here, because this is probably one of your mm -hmm. only is it the uh, only oh, right. yeah. interviews? So yeah. I want to ask you, so I asked another executive earlier this year about that. So, and I asked him about quotas, mm -hmm. and that's kind of a bad word, right? So I right. said, but how do you actually change the balance mm -hmm. without quotas? And I, got, I thought, well, I got a great answer, I'd love to hear yours, but she said, she said to me, you got to look outside your traditional networks, that's mm -hmm. how. Mm -hmm. You can't just go to the people that you, you know, you have to dig yeah. deeper, you have to work harder, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought that was a good answer. Uh, yeah. You know, sort of enlightening, uh, maybe what, obvious. What, I yeah. find what do you it, think? What I find encouraging is when I visit the engineering sites, there's always young women in the intern population and the recent college grads. So I can see a difference. You know, like it's unusual for me to go somewhere and not interact with, you know, at least a few women who are part of our in summer interns or our recent college um, graduates. Whereas you go with the people who are more my age and it's, you know, very, very unusual. So I'm encouraged by the number of young women going into computer science, but I do absolutely agree with you on being, and you know, there is more, it, it is definitely a required focus to really move the needle. This is not going to happen without discipline and focus. I've never asked this, but what's the gaming? What's the gaming culture like? Are, are young girls and women, do they, are they gamers or not so much? I don't so much, think or? as much, no. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind yeah. of a concern, right? Yeah. A lot of the gamers yeah. are in, they're into crypto, they're into... Yeah, yeah that's a, code. you know, that play out in my household because I have two <laughs> girls and a, a boy. I see, for example, my daughters at a very young age, they were, um, you know, they're naturally good with all the STEM topics and they were very into uh, computer science. So I'll give you an example, my, my girl attended a kind of an expo and she approached the guy who's demoing a robot demanded to see the source code. I mean, it's like when she's like nine or 10. But now they're like early in high school. I, I think I see some of that went away. You know, on the other hand, you know, here is my son into crypto. He's doing Bitcoin mining. He's, you know, yeah. hosting yeah. services uh, and making money with advertisement, you know, trying to do blockchain based storage offering. Yeah, I definitely see that play out right in my household. You know, that, you know. Have they, your son uh, give me a call, will you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'd love to laughs> no, but it's true. My 14 yeah. year old boy is similar, maybe not right. as advanced, but, yeah. and my girls are like, no way, I'm not interested in that. So yeah. that's a bit of a concerning I mean, trend. We, could, we can say though, maybe just to, that Dell Technologies, you know, and VMware truly are putting an effort into this. For it sure. Is, it is yeah. something that matters, and there's a recognition that having more women in all ranks of engineering does help. It brings more creative solutions, it gives different perspectives. Yeah. So it is you know, good to work for a company that takes it seriously. Well, it's, yeah. uh, it's always great having you guys on. You're so comfortable talk, talking about this, this topic. You're both great leaders, and really appreciate you coming back on theCUBE. Oh, it's always Thank fun. You. We always have a good time. Good day. Right. Good to see you, you. All right, yeah. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap day one from theCUBE at VMworld 2018 in Las Vegas. We'll be right back.